Papillomaviruses are small, circular, double-stranded DNA viruses that infect humans and other species. More than 100 human papillomavirus types have been characterized, which cause benign or malignant changes of the skin or inner lining of the tissues known as mucosa. Approximately 30 to 40 types infect the anogenital tract, and of these, about 15 to 20 types are associated with cervical cancer. HPV types associated with malignancies are designated high risk because of their high oncogenic potential. In contrast, low risk types have low oncogenic potential. However, they are the cause of a number of benign lesions that are associated with significant morbidity. While for years it was known that human papillomaviruses were the cause of genital warts, today we have evidence that these viruses are associated with a variety of benign and malignant lesions of the external genitalia, anus, and cervix. HPV infection causes virtually all cases of cervical cancer, including squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma, in addition to a fraction of vaginal, vulvar, penile, and anal cancers. To understand how HPV infection may lead to various epithelial changes, it is important to first familiarize ourselves with the anatomy of the female reproductive system. This will include a review of the external genitalia and the epithelium of this region, followed by a review of the anatomy of the cervix and its histological structure. The female reproductive system includes both external and internal structures. Seen here are the uterus, the fallopian tubes, the ovaries, and the vagina. The uterus is comprised of the corpus or main body and the cervix. The cervix is the lower, narrow part of the uterus, which forms a canal that opens into the vagina. The cervix can be seen during pelvic examination. The two fallopian tubes extend from the upper edges of the uterus toward the ovaries. The vagina is part of the birth canal. During a gynecologic exam, the vulva, which includes the mons pubis, the labia majora or large lips, the labia minora or small lips, the clitoris, and the perineum is examined. The cervix consists of the following portions the internal os or opening into the uterine cavity, the endocervix or cervical canal which connects the external os with the internal os, the exocervix or lower intravaginal portion of the cervix which has a convex elliptical surface, and the external os which is the opening of the cervix into the vagina. Two epithelial cell types comprise the cervix, columnar epithelium and stratified squamous epithelium which covers the exocervix. The point at which both epithelia meet is called the squamocolumnar junction or SCJ. During a woman's lifetime the SCJ changes its position on the cervix. In infants the original or native SCJ is located in the endocervical canal. In reproductive age women, this junction moves out to the exocervix, exposing the columnar epithelial cells to the acidic environment of the vagina. In conjunction with changes in the location of the SCJ, a process known as metaplasia begins, when the exposed columnar cells are replaced by immature and eventually mature squamous epithelium. The area between the original SCJ and the newly formed SCJ, the junction between the metaplastic squamous epithelium and the columnar epithelium, is known as the transformation zone. In most cases, cellular changes leading to precancerous or cancerous lesions take place in the transformation zone because metaplastic epithelium is susceptible to cancer-causing stimuli until it matures. For this reason, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia is most likely to occur during the reproductive age when metaplasia is most active. The normal, stratified squamous epithelium of the exocervix is composed of four layers. 
The basal layer, or the stratum basale, is a single or double layer of immature cells which serves to bind the epithelium to the basement membrane. The basement membrane separates the epidermis, the flatter superficial layer of the skin, from the dermis. The parabasal, or stratum spinosum layer, includes two to four rows of cells that provide replacement cells for the overlying epithelium. The intermediate layer, or stratum granulosum, consists of cells with greater amounts of cytoplasm and smaller nuclei. The mature squamous layer, or stratum corneum, includes rows of flattened cells with small uniform nuclei and cytoplasm filled with glycogen. In contrast to epithelial cells in the outer layer of the skin, which are dry and flaky, cells of mucosal surfaces do not produce large amounts of keratin proteins. The cells in the basal layer divide along the basement membrane, leading to some progeny cells that differentiate while moving vertically through the epithelium without further division. Cells reaching the stratum corneum die and exfoliate from the surface. Although most anogenital HPV infections are transient and resolve spontaneously, they can result in morphologic changes ranging from benign warts and other low-grade lesions to invasive cancers of the cervix, vagina, vulva, and anus. To better understand the various manifestations of HPV infection, we will begin first by describing the life cycle of HPV followed by the development of low-grade lesions including warts and will conclude with a discussion of how some infections lead to high-grade lesions and cancer. The life cycle of HPV begins with infection of the basal cells of the epithelium, presumably as a result of microscopic tears in the skin or mucosa. The following example illustrates this process in squamous epithelium. Following infection and uncoating of the viral capsid, composed of the late or structural proteins L1 and L2, the viral genome is transported into the cell nucleus, where it exists as an episome. Expression of several viral early proteins, such as E6 and E7, results in the proliferation and lateral expansion of the basal cells. Following the movement of infected basal cells into the suprabasal layers, namely the stratum spinosum, granulosum, and corneum, higher levels of viral replication occur. Late viral genes L1 and L2 are expressed, while early gene expression is shut off and structural proteins form. In the stratum corneum, viral particles are assembled and released with the shedding of mature epithelial cells. These infectious particles are then able to infect other basal cells of the squamous epithelium in areas of microtrauma. Although the vast majority of HPV infections clear spontaneously, some persist as subclinical latent infections, whereas others progress and lead to cellular changes detected by Papa Nicolau pap screening or visually. Low-grade HPV lesions. Low-grade intraepithelial neoplasias occurring in the mucosa of the cervix, vagina, or vulva are described histologically as cervical intraepithelial neoplasia grade 1, CIN1, vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia grade 1, VAIN1, and vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia grade 1, VIN1.